Coffee is one of the most popular beverages drank all over the world. It's only second behind tea. So number one is water, but let's not talk about water as a beverage. It's, you know, it's necessary for life. But the first, the largest uh, um, beverage, it's, uh, or the most popular beverage is tea, but the second is coffee. And coffee is actually drank in more than 100 countries all over the world. And a lot of people start their day by drinking coffee. Now, I myself also, I drink coffee in the morning, in the moment I get up, and I generally drink about two to three cups of coffee throughout the entire day. Now, in this YouTube video, we'll be exploring what are the effects of drinking coffee on your skin's health, whether it's a positive effect or whether it's a negative effect. Now, however, we, before we continue with the video, guys, just help subscribe to the channel because it helps the YouTube algorithm push us the videos like this to more people so that we can generate a little bit of AdSense money to fund the next video. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Ingi, your digital skin doctor, and welcome to Skin Fix, the platform whereby we educate and we try to entertain once in a while. Now, in this video, we'll be exploring the effects of coffee on your skin, and more importantly, drinking coffee. Or what are the effects of drinking coffee on your skin, whether they are positive effects or negative effects. Now, first of all, let's put a baseline first, all right? When we talk about coffee, majority of the time, we're actually talking about the caffeine inside the coffee itself. Now, in a cup of coffee that's generating around, give or take, depends on what kind of beans you use, roughly about 80 milligrams of caffeine. Now, the recommended caffeine intake on a daily basis is 100 to 200 milligrams daily. And if you exceed 250 milligrams, now that's where you get side effects like palpitations, dizziness, even in some cases, hallucinations. Now, if you drink more than 1,000 milligrams of coffee, it means it's roughly about, about 12 cups of coffee every day. Now, that's when you actually get very extreme palpitations, even sometimes chest pains, and that's when you need to make a trip to the ER. Now, guys, we've scoured the internet for clinical studies of the effects of drinking coffee on your skin. And here are a few things, interesting things that we actually found. There are actually four effects of caffeine or coffee on your skin, three good ones, and one negative effect. And if you stay long enough to the end of the video, I'm gonna give a bonus effect number five, which is not included in most studies. All right, we're gonna start with the positive effects first, all right? So there are three positive effects backed up by clinical studies. Now, the first one is it's anti-carcinogenic. Now, there's growing literature that shows that caffeine is actually protective against things like cancer and melanomas. Now, caffeine also exerts its anti-proliferative and anti-carcinogenic effect via inhibiting proliferation of cancer cells. And there are also studies that equates that caffeine itself has a protective mechanism akin to sunscreen, whereby it minimizes sunburns and at the same time inhibits the negative effects of UV radiation on your skin. Now, how does caffeine actually reduce cancer, especially melanomas? Now, what they've, they've done is, um, when the research have shown that caffeine itself reduces something called P53 proliferation. So how does caffeine actually reduce something like melanoma? Now, what they've shown is caffeine increases apoptosis, which is cell death, which has been damaged by UV radiation. It means that even before these particular pre-cancer cells have the chance to grow, the caffeine would have already downregulated and killed them off. So in this large prospective study whereby they followed 15,000 people, um, they realized that people who drank more than four cups of coffee per day actually have their risk of skin cancers, especially melanoma, reduced by up to 20%. And now when they compared that with people who drank decaffeinated coffee, now the people who drank decaffeinated coffee had no reduction of risk of melanomas. So it means that if you, if you have a family history of melanoma, it's your best bet to drink caffeinated coffee and skip the decaf. Hey, before we continue with the video, I just wanna ask a brief question. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? I, on average, drink three to four cups. How about you? Now, 
I, I understand that four cups of coffee, it's a little bit too much for some people to take. Um, especially, you know, I actually know some people with whereby if they drink, you just drink more than one cup of coffee per day, they get palpitations, headaches, you know, sweaty, and then nausea. So there is an, also another study which shows that if, if you take just one cup of coffee per day, it reduces the risk of melanomas by 3%. Well, 3% is it's better than 0%. In conclusion, coffee has anti-carcinogenic effects and it helps reduce the risk of skin melanomas. It's, if you drink one cup of coffee per day, it reduces up to 3%. If you drink more than four cups a day, roughly up to 20%. And if you have high risk of melanomas, your best bet is to take a little bit of caffeine on a daily basis. Now, the second positive effect of caffeine is it reduces psoriatic flare-ups. Now, there are two reasons why coffee reduces psoriatic flare-ups. Well, the first of all is coffee itself contains polyphenols. Now, if you're not sure what a polyphenol is, it's actually a protein found in plants which helps reduce inflammation. Now, what I've discovered is the polyphenols in coffee are both antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. And psoriasis is a systemic inflammation of your skin. So it means that if you have reduced your, uh, some, somehow reduced inflammation, the risk of getting a psoriatic flare-up is actually much lesser. Now, that's polyphenols. How about caffeine? Now, caffeine also has immunomodulatory effects. That means that it actually regulates your immune system. Now, caffeine reduces pro-inflammatory cytokines and at the same time reduces the migration of white blood cells, your neutrophils and your monocytes, to the skin lesions. Now, in this study right here, it shows that if you have psoriasis and you take coffee, the, uh, the amount of flare-ups is actually much lesser. Now, the third beneficial effects of coffee is on reduction of rosacea. Now, rosacea is a skin condition whereby um, there is acne and there is redness over the skin. Now, generally, it's triggered by sunlight, by taking spicy food, stress, or even alcohol. And this particular skin condition actually generally follows someone throughout their entire life. This is actually because the blood vessels are very sensitive to pro-inflammatory cytokines. There is a study which follows 82,000 women and it shows that if you drink more than four cups of coffee per day, it reduces your rosacea flare-ups by 23%. So if you are suffering from rosacea issues, you should take coffee on a daily basis. Now, even if you don't take up to four cups of coffee per day, even a cup of coffee itself will be able to mitigate or reduce your risk of your rosacea flare-up. Now, those are the positive effects of caffeine on your skin. Now, how, how about, what are the negative effects of drinking coffee and what effect does it have on your skin? Now, unfortunately, when I read this study, I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, because I like to drink coffee. Now, in this particular study, it shows that caffeine reduces collagen synthesis. That means the negative effect of coffee, it promotes premature aging. Despite caffeine being antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, what they've discovered is caffeine actually reduces the synthesis of biological collagen. So what they've discovered is caffeine actually reduces uh, wound healing. So if you have an open wound, drinking coffee isn't so good for you. And that's, that's why there's a lot of, um, if you go to a lot of hospitals, um, especially if you're undergoing surgery, generally doctors will tell you to skip the coffee for a couple of days before surgery and to withhold your coffee until your wound has um, completely healed. And also what I've noticed is because there's reduction of collagen synthesis, now what happens is then there's appearance of wrinkles at a much earlier rate. Now when they compared that with hyaluronic acid, they discovered that HA itself actually has a protective mechanism against premature aging. So in the same study, it shows that if you use HA, you can actually slow down the aging process. Now, hyaluronic acid helps with skin's hydration and in a way, it helps promote collagen synthesis. Now, then you might be asking yourself, what if I use HA, man, hyaluronic acid serums or creams while drinking coffee? Now, unfortunately, the study did show that HA does not have any protective mechanisms against the negative results or negative effects of caffeine on your skin. So it doesn't matter how much HA you use, if you drink coffee, your collagen is not gonna grow as quickly and then you're gonna get premature aging. Now it also shows that if you drink caffeine when you're pregnant, it does reduce collagen synthesis in the embryo itself. Now this could lead to babies coming up much smaller than they, than, than they should be and what is what we call small for gestational age. 
Now, we've covered three positive effects of caffeine on your skin and one negative effect of drinking coffee on your skin. Now, this is a bonus study which I, which I found. There are more and more, or there are actually a lot of caffeine eye creams in the market. Now, even though this video is not about applying caffeine, but since we are on the topic of, of coffee and caffeine, just let me just touch base on this one study. There was a study done in 2010 in Thailand. There was a study done in 2010 in Thailand, whereby they followed roughly about 35 people and it provided them with a 3% caffeine solution, a gel for them to put under their eyes versus, and they give them a placebo, which is a water-based gel. And they asked them to apply in their eyes for eye puffiness. Now, caffeine, has been marketed as a product to help reduce eye puffiness because it's supposed to constrict your blood vessels, reduce the amount of water going to the eyes, hence reduce puffiness. Now, the study shows that, yes, by applying caffeine under your eyes, which is the thinnest skin in your body, caffeine is actually absorbed into the skin. However, the conclusion is caffeine does not actually help eye puffiness. However, there was reduction in eye puffiness in all the participants who used both gels. Now, then the conclusion is, it's probably the water gel itself, the hydrophilic nature, which is the water-loving nature of the gel, which helps cool down the skin and hence reduce eye puffiness. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're using a caffeine eye cream, eye serum or eye solution, and you see your eye puffiness are going down, you might want to save your money and just switch on to a regular HA serum because again, there's no differences in both. Hey guys, that's the end of the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this particular video, the effects of drinking coffee on your skin. And do not forget, if you like the video, please subscribe, like, comment, forward this to your family and friends who like drinking coffee. And until next time, I'm Dr. Inky, your digital skin doctor. And always remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay informed. Are you tired of wasting time and money on your skin, but nothing works? We are here to help. SkinFix is a platform that provides personal care education completely free. SkinFix is run by skin doctors and skincare experts. You can chat and consult with our skin doctors without ever leaving your home. Other than free advice, SkinFix also provides tailor-made solutions for your skin problem with customized medical-grade skincare delivered right to your doorstep. SkinFix, your digital skin doctor.